Am I the asshole for telling my sister she is an idiot if she thought her actions at her wedding wouldn't have consequences? Quick backstory. My bio dad died when I was young and my mom remarried when my sister was eight and I was 10. We are now in our late 20s. Stepdad focused a lot of his time providing for us so I never got close to him, but I am grateful for him. I am engaged and my sister is going to marry in about a month. My wedding will be in a year. Both of us are close to our mom. My sister, who I will call Noel, fucked up in my opinion. At first, I was on her side, but now I just feel bad for my stepdad. Noelle isn't going to have him walk her down the aisle and give her away. I understood this is her decision, and when it came out, I helped my mom and stepdad understand that this was her choice. The turning point happened last week when she told us that he will not be sitting at the family table. When I asked her why, she made it clear that he wasn't family to her. Again, her right, but dang, he is the reason we had such a good childhood and are debt-free, as he paid for our college because he worked a ton. I knew this would result in them not going to the wedding, and they informed my sister. She called me upset and was ranting about how it was her wedding, that she was being abandoned. I had enough and told her she's an idiot if she didn't think her actions wouldn't have consequences. She called me a jerk and hung up. I am unsure if I am a jerk, and I do feel guilty since I am now closer to my parents, since I promised he can walk me down the aisle at my wedding. So Reddit, am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for telling my fiance my daughter has to be in our wedding? I, 45 male, have a daughter, Penny, from a previous relationship. I divorced my ex-wife on good terms and we share 50-50 custody of Penny. She is now 11. After I divorced my wife, I met my now fiance, Sharon. Sharon and my daughter got along very well. After five years in my relationship with Sharon, I proposed. Sharon was super excited and wanted to start planning right away. She looked at venues and started asking her friends to be her bridesmaids. She then told me she wanted her niece to be a flower girl, which I had no problem with, but I said I also wanted Penny to be a flower girl. Sharon looked at me funny and then said that she didn't think that Penny would, quote, fit the part. I got angry and told Sharon that my daughter would be in our wedding. Sharon started to become upset and said that the girls in the wedding were up to her and Penny wouldn't be one of them. I told Sharon that if Penny wasn't in the wedding, then there might not be a wedding. I stormed out and took Penny to get ice cream. Penny knows we are getting married and told me she thinks she will look pretty in whatever dress Sharon decides she would wear. This broke my heart and I decided to text Sharon. I told her I would be staying at a friend's to think this over. My mother-in-law texted me saying I was overreacting and that my daughter doesn't have to be in my wedding and that I was an ass for saying that I would cancel. So did I take it too far in saying that I will cancel? Am I overreacting or am I being a good dad? Update. I came home to talk to Sharon today. I pulled in our driveway and my mother-in-law was sitting there in her car. I got out and walked inside wanting to avoid talking to mother-in-law. Sharon was sitting at the kitchen table and I joined her. She sat in silence so I asked the first question. Why does Penny not fit the part and why don't you want her in the wedding at all? Her answers full on shocked me. She quietly said, quote, I was hoping that after the wedding you could become a holiday visit only dad. I didn't want her in the wedding so she wouldn't be in the photos around the house since she wasn't going to be around much. I kept my cool calmly took her hand and pulled my engagement ring off her eyes started to tear up she said that we shouldn't end the marriage over this and that she can change i told her that the damage was already done i told her that i wanted her things moved out by next week and that she could come and get them when my daughter wasn't home the house is in my name and i paid for it i was allowing her to get her furniture that she paid for she stormed out and mother-in-law came knocking on the door saying i was being unreasonable i couldn't imagine only seeing my daughter three or four times a year the fact that sharon wanted me to give up part of my custody blew me away. I'm sitting on my couch just in shock. Our honeymoon was supposed to be in Hawaii. Looks like me and Penny will be going instead. I will update again if anything happens. Am I the asshole for reporting my college professor to my school? Edit. Please understand I am not from America. I'm from Europe. This is in fact how college works in my country. I know it might sound strange if you're thinking about American college, homeroom teachers and all, but this is how college works in my country. Before this starts, I would like to apologize for any spelling mistakes. English is not my first language. I, 21 female, have been going to college since September of last year. From September to November, we had a really nice lady as our main professor, homeroom teacher. She was already at the end of her pregnancy when we started the school year, so unfortunately she had to go. In December, we got a different professor, male 38. I'll call him K. K was a nice guy. He wasn't too old, so we got along with all of the students. He was funny, and everyone who knew him loved him. A week before winter break, he had everyone do a PowerPoint presentation about themselves, which, although some of us found foolish, we all liked him so nobody complained. Multiple students did their presentations before me, and all was fine until it was my turn. 
I am a contortionist, and the summer before college I got to perform in a traveling circus. I had been to my circus many times before, so it was very cool that I got to be a part of the show. Girls Contortion the being my biggest hobby, phone, I obviously mentioned it in my bad, presentation. When I mentioned that I got to perform in a circus, and that it was my dream job, Kay burst out laughing. He said, I've never heard someone be this excited to be a clown. Everyone else in the class started to laugh. It's a bit ignorant to assume that everyone in a circus is a clown, but fine. My mood changed, however, when I showed them a picture of me in a contortion. Like many poses in contortion, I was pretty much bent in half. When I showed that picture, one of my classmates yelled, Now that's an arched back! To which Kay, who should be more professional than that, responded, I bet you're quite popular in the bedroom. My heart dropped when he said that. I could not believe it. I refused to finish my presentation. My class said I was overreacting. After class, when I was about to walk out, I turned to Kay and said, Gross joke. Then he said, We're all adults here. We can joke with each other. Sometimes you just have to put your big girl pants on and suck it up. I didn't respond and walked out. At home, I could not stop crying because I really felt uncomfortable with that joke. I can usually handle it, but for some reason, I felt like an idiot standing there. I told my mom about what happened and she made me send an email to the school. They took it very seriously and said they would take immediate action. January 8th was the first day back after school after winter break. We were introduced to a new professor. She's okay, but she's quite strict and not everyone likes her. She had a long lecture about inappropriate comments and how we as adults need to respect boundaries since we're no longer little kids. Now a lot of the classmates are mad at me because they are blaming me for Kay being gone. I don't know if Kay still works at our college. I'm not sure what happened to him, but everyone thinks I'm an asshole now. So am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for telling my son's teacher to speak to me and not my girlfriend? I, 28 male, have a son, Nathan, 6 male. I'm his sole parent because his mother lost the custody battle. His school was made aware of this when I removed his mother's details from their system and his current teacher for grade 1 has not met my, has not met my ex. During the nature of the custody battle, his teacher does know about my ex for safety reasons as she has been barred from coming into the school to get him. Basically, she knows that if I'm ever with a woman, it is definitely not my ex. His school has parent-teacher meetings twice a year, once before Christmas break and another at the end of the academic year. I've been dating my current girlfriend, Venus, 24 female, for the past eight months, and she has an amazing relationship with my son. He likes her a lot, and he asked me if she could come to me with the parent-teacher conference because he wanted her to hear how well he's been doing in school. My son used to struggle with English as his mother tongue is Spanish. My Spanish is okay, but Venus's Spanish is fluent, so she's helped him improve his English speaking by tutoring him. At the meeting, I noticed that the teacher was only speaking to my girlfriend. She was making eye contact with her and only directly conversating with her. I found this annoying because although I know most parents are women, the teacher is well aware that I am Nathan's sole parent. Venus kept redirecting the conversation to me, and I did ask a few questions, but the teacher would speak to me for a few seconds, then go back to speaking with my girlfriend only. Eventually, I said, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I'm Nathan's father. I'd appreciate it if you spoke directly to me. Mm -hmm. The teacher seemed taken aback and irritated, but she apologized and spoke to me for the rest of the meeting. I told my brother-in-law about what happened, and he thinks I overreacted. He said that while he does find it annoying when the teacher only speaks to my sister at meetings, he understands that it's not out of malice and just a force of habit since mothers tend to be the more involved ones over fathers. He also said that it was my fault for bringing Venus along to the meeting. He thinks it was an asshole move for me to interrupt the teacher and make her feel like she did something wrong for something that was most likely not malicious. It was then brought up again at Christmas because Venus spent it with my family and my mother asked Venus if she had Nathan's inhaler and my brother-in-law interrupted and said, careful, Mark might freak out now. I would just like to put the situation to rest, but am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for canceling a trip because my fiance's ex and her baby are coming? I, 32 female, have been with Kyle, 37 male, for 2.5 years. We got engaged six months ago. Kyle has been divorced for over five years. 
He was married to Elena, and they have a son, Grayson. Elena also has a toddler from a guy she met after her divorce. Grayson is a wonderful little kid. He has his room in our house, and he is so loved by all of us. Kyle and Elena are good friends, and co-parenting is great. The problem I have is that she is everywhere. Besides the holidays and birthdays, which I understand, Christmas, Grayson's birthday, Thanksgiving, Elena and her baby are pretty much invited to any family functions, such as Kyle's birthday, Kyle's parents' anniversary, our camping trips, my birthday, yes, Kyle invited her to my birthday. I have talked to Kyle many times, but he thinks I'm being insecure for no reason and making a big deal out of nothing. I booked a trip to Mexico in January for me, Kyle, and Grayson. Kyle told Elena that on the last week of January, he will have Grayson for an extra week since he was coming to Mexico with us. Apparently, Elena managed to ask him about our trip dates and details. I saw on Facebook she was posting about swimsuit shopping for her upcoming trip. Kyle texted her and asked her if she was going somewhere that week too. She said she researched searched our hotel and quote, I took advantage of the same deal as you guys, so I guess we will see you there, haha. <laughs> I told Kyle that we are canceling the trip, and he says we can't because tickets are non-refundable. I told him that I'm not going. I want for once to have a family vacation without his ex-wife, but Kyle thinks there's nothing we can do now. We need to address this for future plans and be more clear about boundaries. Am I the asshole for refusing to go to a Christmas party after my husband brought up his concerns about my old life? I, 37 female, and my husband, 52 male, have been together for nine years. For a little backstory, when we met, he was my next door neighbor and I worked in a gentleman's club and was working on my degree in holistic medicine. When we got together, I quit working as I was finishing my last few months toward my degree and everything was going smoothly. I had been working in my field for the last eight and a half years consistently in my own private practice and I haven't looked back on my old life. Fast forward, he has been working his job for over a year and this is the first time he has been invited to a corporate Christmas party that was not during business hours and we were both excited to go. The day before the party, I told him I had taken off from work so I could go shopping for a Christmas dress so I could dress appropriately since mostly these days all I ever wear is scrubs. He told me that he was worried about someone recognizing me for my old life and that it would embarrass him if someone did, and that if they did, he would have to quit his job because he wouldn't be able to handle people talking behind his back about how he was married to an ex-stripper. As this comment offended me, I took in what he said, and I told him that if he is that concerned about someone recognizing me from my old life, then maybe it would be best if I didn't go to save him the possible embarrassment. He told me that I was being selfish, and that I should have thought about what I was doing back then, and what consequences would have come about in the future. I suppose he is right in this regard, because I don't talk about it, but never did I think it would come back to haunt me later. Am I the asshole for refusing to go to a Christmas party after my husband brought up his concerns about my old life? Am I the asshole for cussing at a teacher after she gave my information to a reporter? Hmm. I'm one of a few but growing number of single men who forego marriage to become a dad on my own. In my case, I used a surrogate three times, so I have three boys between the age of five and ten. When they started school and started to make friends, I did tell a few parents because they wanted to know more about me before letting their kids spend time with my kids. Most were intrigued for a few minutes, but that went away once they realized how normal we are. I'm neither an advocate nor an opponent of single parent surrogacy. I did what worked for me. I also don't promote it in the same way people promote their personal lives for clout. In fact, I haven't told anybody about it in years. That brings me to my son's second grade teacher, Mrs. F. I got a random call from a reporter asking to interview me for a magazine piece on men resorting to surrogacy to have kids. I thought it was a joke, but he had all sorts of information, including the names of my kids and what I did for work. I asked how he got my information, and he said Mrs. F is a friend of his. In fact, she gave him my number. I was pissed. The next day, I told Mrs. F about the call and she said it would be so exciting to be in a magazine and online. I asked why the fuck did she put my personal life out there? That's a total betrayal of trust. She said she didn't know I'd be this upset and simply thought I'd be open to it. I told her that I didn't tell her my business, let alone give her permission to spread it. She didn't really say anything, so I called her a fucking moron who needs to grow up. She probably thought I'd complain to the principal, but that's just not my style. I will tell you the stuff to your face. Now, the VP principal is acting like an intermissionary between us after she said I cussed at her. He did say that I was out of line, but she was even way more out of line. 
He asked me to understanding because she's young and she lives online. I told him that he's just mad that he actually has to do some work now. And the funny part is that I'm not even mad anymore. I don't like her, but it's not like she matters in a few months. Am I the asshole? New teacher here. I was just let go because I pointed a finger at a group of students in my classroom to tell them to wrap it up. They were running out of time. My index finger was pointed and my thumb was up resembling a gun gesture. It was reported and as a result, I lost my job. I admitted that I pointed at the group using a hand gesture resembling a gun, but it was meant to be lighthearted and in the past, the kids found it amusing. A boy whose father had an issue with me reported the incident. I apologized to the boy because I had no intention of intimidating or scaring him. In fact, if I had genuinely scared someone, it would have devastated me. The boy seemed wide-eyed and smiled strangely when I made the gesture, almost as if he was pleased to have something to report to the principal about me. His family reportedly said concerning the, the incident that they were scared for their safety. They took me to the office and even searched my purse for a gun. I explained to them that it was just my finger and that it was not loaded. I assured them that I would holster my finger and return to class. The principal contacted the superintendent and they decided to investigate the matter. However, before I knew it, I was let go because they claimed I didn't show remorse for my actions, despite apologizing to the student twice in the principal's office and once again in the hallway when I saw him again. I can't believe I lost my job over this, and I feel like either I'm going mad or everyone else is. I would appreciate all honest opinions concerning this fiasco. If I am completely in the wrong, I need to hear it and be corrected. Thank you for taking the time to read this. I needed to vent. Am I the asshole for telling my daughter's teacher that she is being fucking stupid? I really lost my cool yesterday and I'm feeling really shitty about it. So I thought I'd check in with the internet for some clarity. My 11 year old daughter is in sixth grade this year and she's been working really hard in math. She has gotten over 80% in every class has so far with sheer blood, sweat, and tears. She never used to be particularly good at school or exams. She's, of course, an amazing kid in a million ways, but really struggles with math and other subjects as well. Her math teacher has a pin board where she posts the names of two kids that have worked the hardest that week. She gives those kids a small reward, like a chocolate bar or something. I thought this was a good idea because it motivates the kids who struggle with math. My daughter came crying a few weeks ago about how she's never gotten picked as the week's hard worker. I asked her, how does the teacher pick these people? And she says she doesn't really know, but it's usually kids who don't do great on tests. If they showed a little improvement, then they go on the board. It seems really unfair to the kids who had worked hard and scored well, like my daughter. Yesterday, we had the first parent-teacher meeting of the year, and I brought this up to the math teacher. She basically said that my daughter does well only because she is naturally talented. So she only wants to give the reward to the hard workers who actually put in an effort for every mark. I just blew up on her. I yelled at her, and I called her a fucking idiot. And that she has no idea how much my daughter studies, even though she's in the sixth grade, for fuck's sakes. I said it's really unfair to obviously favor kids who don't get the good grades. I feel guilty for making a scene and also is the teacher right here? I might be a little biased because I'm not a teacher and my daughter is involved, but am I the asshole here? Definitely an overreaction to say the least. Was I in the wrong for not covering up when my boyfriend requested me to? Get ready with me, anonymous story time! Stop. Last night, I was at my boyfriend's dorm, like I usually am on the weekends, and it so happened that some of his friends decided to come over at last minute to play some video games on his PS5. I didn't have a problem, and I never have a problem when his friends come over because, just like me, my boyfriend also deserves to have some fun time with his boys. Typically, when it's a lazy day and I'm spending time with my boyfriend, I like to dress very bummy, very Adam Sandler-like. I love to wear either big tees, sports bras. It just so happened that this specific day, I was wearing a sports bra. 
I do want to mention I was wearing sweats with the sports bra kind of like an outfit like this my boyfriend asked me if I was able to put on one of his t-shirts that way I don't expose myself too much to his friends and I understood where he was coming from so although I was a little bit annoyed when he requested me to do so again I still understood where he was coming from especially because I feel like it would have been an awkward environment and growing up with guys my entire life I kind of already know how guys are whether they say things to joke around or not I don't want to put him or myself in an awkward position I also hate arguing so I didn't question it again I understood and I ended up going to his closet and that's when I realized he only had hoodies in his closet that's when I realized that all of his t-shirts were in the laundry and for him laundry day is usually on the weekends so at this point I was stuck with the hoodie his dorm is usually extremely hot and musty and there was absolutely no way I was going to wear a thick hoodie. I did not care. I was not about to wear a hoodie and suffer. I'm sorry, I was not going to. Where I live, it is extremely hot. I live in Arizona. So imagine the Arizona heat being stuck in a dorm that's already musty and hot as heck. Now I have to be under the covers and in a hoodie. I have to dress. Like, I'm going to the snow. You're crazy. You're crazy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So I ended up calling my boyfriend over and I told him that I would compromise and I would just put a sabana over me. If you guys don't know what a sabana is, it is basically like a lightweight blanket. It's basically like the first layer blanket that you put on your bed. He was a little bit reluctant with the idea, but nonetheless, he agreed. So this is where the problem comes into play. His friends ended up showing up and an hour in, I ended up getting really thirsty. And the thing is, I totally forgot that I didn't put on a shirt or a sweater on. And I ended up getting up, I took off the blanket that I had on until I went to the kitchen to grab myself a glass of water. The thing is, at this point, I had already completely exposed myself to his friends and the thing is i don't believe i was you know too out there but of course because i do have like larger breasts they were definitely out there i didn't think about it too much at that time but the moment that my boyfriend's friends left that's when he came into my room and he was extremely upset he started to mention that this is exactly why he wanted me to wear a hoodie and i responded back to him and i told him that it's not that big of a deal i also mentioned to him that his friends were probably so focused on the game that they didn't even look at me plus i was wearing a sports bra so to be honest in my opinion i really don't think my outfit was too provocative my boyfriend didn't agree with my reasoning he was still very upset but i know eventually he got over it for those watching i want to know if you believe i was in the wrong for not covering up as he requested or do you think he was in the wrong for requesting me to cover up let me know in the comments below what you think parents mad i wore the same print and size as child this is working at a public school summer program. So, one of the places I get cute, simple dresses, almost tunic shirts that I wear over leggings is Children's Place. The skater dresses I'll usually get are size 14 or 16. They do not look like a children's dress, i.e. not special, loud, or otherwise distinct. They fall about mid-thigh for me, again, more like a long tunic shirt. Never had a complaint ever. I've done it for years. These are often marked down to $10 or less. When I was getting a couple of new ones, I noticed this. Science teacher me had to have it. It's so fucking perfect. I teach STEM. I couldn't resist. I also sent the link to the art teacher because there's a fantastic art one. So I wear it and it so happens one of the girls in my class, a middle school kid, is wearing it too. She's a head shorter than me so the dress comes down to her knees. She was wearing shorts. Summertime outing code of conduct for outdoor science is shoulder to knee coverage to help prevent burns and injury. We're all within the code. Cool, right? She wanted to take a picture of us twinning and I let her because how cute is that? Mom comes in and loses her shit. She said I made her daughter look bad because she wears a size 16 too. Yes, the child's dress is very tight on her, but kiddo said it was... Also the most comfortable clothing she had, so I was happy for her. 
That was the entirety of the convo. Kraken 2.0 complained to, to admin that her grown-ass teacher has to violate dress code by being a pervert and wearing kids' clothes. I might point out that had I not been wearing pants, the dress would, but I had pants on, not shorts, so going to my thighs is not an issue. Admin told me while I was completely in code that no teacher should ever wear children's clothing for any reason. I pointed out that they'd literally, just for weeks before, suggested that teachers check out the Princess Awesome site for inspiration for clothing that inspired kids. Never mind this dress with $13 and Princess Awesome is $65. To which they said, those are in adult sizes. Even if they offer children's clothes and you fit, you need to buy the adult ones. What the actual fuck? The art teacher, who was in the union, was livid and she's dealing with it on her end. I'm just a contractor. But really? Part of me wants to be understanding, but part of me is just so angry because it's a dress that fits. I'm willing to accept that I'm wrong because it's kids' clothing. But am I in the wrong? Would I be the asshole if I show my daughter's teacher's Twitch scream to the school's administration? Hmm. My daughter is in high school. Last year, she had a younger science teacher, a woman in her mid-20s who hadn't been teaching very long. About halfway through the year, my daughter and her friends found out this teacher was streaming on Twitch. My daughter doesn't know who found the teacher's stream first, but her and her friends started watching and clipping everything the teacher did and saved it in all their phones. I just recently discovered these videos when I grounded my daughter from her phone and I am shocked to say the least. First of all, the teacher is streaming in some kind of weird big boobed anime character. She is extremely inappropriate, using foul language and making sexual comments super casually on stream. There are probably 50 different clips I found in my daughter's Snapchat of her teacher doing this. I wasn't sure what any of this was at first and when I asked my daughter about it and why she had such weird video saved, she said, Mom, we're pretty sure that's Mrs. X. She has the same voice and everything. This particular teacher left the school at the start of this year, but I found out quickly which school she moved to with a Google search. I want to email the administration for her new school and let them know what kind of inappropriate activities this teacher engages in outside of work. I reached out to the parents and some of them are telling me to leave it alone and let this teacher live her life, but there is one that's on the fence and kind of agrees with my viewpoint here. My daughter and her friends swear the teacher never invited any students to watch her stream and was actually trying to keep it a secret and had a nervous breakdown last year about them harassing her online. And it's why she went and found a new job this year. I know teachers are allowed to have lives and hobbies outside of work, but I just think this is too inappropriate to go unpunished. She can't just run away from her poor and unprofessional behavior. If she's going to be part of this profession, she should be more mindful of the content she puts on the internet. And I honestly don't think other parents would be pleased to know that their kids have a teacher that shouts loudly on the internet about which anime character she wants to toss her salad. Would I be the asshole if I show her new school administration her Twitch account? My guy best friend got my name tatted on him without my permission. Get ready with me, anonymous story time! I'm 27 and my guy best friend is 29 years old and we have been best friends for about 6 years. Yes, you heard that right. Six years. I met him at my first job. Since the first day him and I met, we clicked right away. In fact, we've never really had an argument till this day up until the fact that he decided to get my name tatted on his body. My best friend is very sweet, kind, and gentle towards me. He would frequently buy me gifts such as custom necklaces, bracelets, anklets, things like that. While I, on the other hand, would gift my best friend sweaters, stuffed animals, and more of like the simple things. I personally have never cared for materialistic things. I personally like to gift things that are more meaningful. Of course, I'm very grateful for all the gifts that he gifted me, but I honestly didn't feel like they were necessary. Again, I am very grateful for the gifts. Do not get oh, it twisted. I feel like that. I need to repeat that. I was curious to why he got my name tatted on his body and honestly he couldn't give me an answer he just said he wanted to and that caused our first fight especially because i was more concerned on his future girl what is his future girl gonna say when she finds out that he has his girl best friend's name tatted and i know a lot of people might be like oh well isn't it obvious he got your name tatted because he likes you him and i have had a conversation in the past talking about 
feelings and we both came to the realization and understanding that we were just better off as best friends than anything else i feel like i never really had any interest towards him in a relationship aspect and he also confessed to me that he didn't have any feelings so before anyone questions we already had that talk so no he didn't like me honestly say he did lie at this point it's not really my fault because he's a grown-ass man i also do want to mention that he has never tried a move on me we have not kissed we have not done literally anything i feel like right now i'm just in a weird position i don't really know how to feel i do feel a little bit guilty because i am upset at him because he's honestly one of the bestest friends i've ever had yeah, and i'm not necessarily that. mad because he didn't ask for permission it's his body he can do whatever he wants and again i don't have control of what he decides to do i'm honestly just curious to why he did it and he doesn't want to explain to me why he did it he just tells me not to worry about it like who cares like it is what it is but i don't know if he realizes that a tattoo is permanent and even if he decides to you know remove the tattoo it does like leave a certain mark so i feel like he's always gonna remember it but i feel like my biggest concern is just the fact whenever he gets a girlfriend she's gonna question it she's not gonna like it you know things like that i'm just really worried that he's gonna regret it so i don't know ladies if you ever met a man and you were on the verge to date him he liked you he showed interest would you pursue him knowing that he has a girl name tatted on him and it's none of his family members what are you guys' thoughts on that would you be friends with someone who has a girl best friend like let me know what are your thoughts am i overreacting what please tell me what would you do not to be toxic or crazy but i personally don't know if i can be with a man who has another girl's name tatted just because i'm traumatized from my past so i'm gonna assume the absolute worst and even if he's telling me the truth i feel like i just won't believe him the only person's name that i would get tatted on me is my dad and that's it like i used to have a guy best friend and i love that man so much so much i would do anything for him but never in my mind did me getting his name tatted cross my mind anyways let me know your thoughts in the comments below i love you and i'll see you guys in my next story time bye